the Mountaineer Sports Network. Senior tailback A.B. Brown is on a roll. He's rushed for over 100 yards in each of his last two games. Today, Brown will try to extend his streak against the Pirates of East Carolina. Stay tuned as the sixth-rated West Virginia Mountaineers meet the Pirates of ECU along the Mountaineer Sports Network. Today's game is brought to you by Budweiser, Beachwood Age, for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. East Centurion Bank Shares, building our communities together. Walker Machinery, your Caterpillar dealer. Your Mountaineer Chrysler Plymouth dealers. The competition knows it's the team to beat. U.S. Air, with flights to over 100 cities in North America. At U.S. Air, we welcome all of our passengers, one at a time. Greetings, everyone, from Ficklin Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina. This afternoon, the sixth-rated West Virginia Mountaineers take on the Pirates of East Carolina. I'm Tony Caridi, along with John Garcia, and we're glad you're with us along the Mountaineers Sports Network. Well, I guess you could call the East Carolina Pirates of 1988 a Jekyll and Hyde team. Offensively, they have proven they can score, averaging up to 30 points a game, but... John, on defense, they've given up 93 points in the last two games, and because of that, they've made nine defensive personnel changes from a week ago. Now, how can that affect the team? Those type switches can be good, and they can be bad. If they're good, they'll come out and play a lot of enthusiastic football. If they're bad, they'll have a bunch of inexper inexperienced players running around in circles. Well, West Virginia had some problems a week ago, six turnovers and 13 penalties against Virginia Tech, yet they were able to come away with a victory, rolling up over 500 yards of total offense. This afternoon, Don Nealon says the mistakes have to be taken care of, and if they are, the Mountaineers should leave Greenville with a 6-0 record. Stay tuned. The opening kickoff coming up, West Virginia against East Carolina along the Mountaineers Sports Network. And we welcome you back to Ficklin Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina. The West Virginia Mountaineers have taken the field along with the Pirates of East Carolina. Homecoming 1988 here at Ficklin Stadium. Crowd estimates uh, supposedly in 30,000 in the 30,000 range with the attendance uh, capacity being about 35,000 but plenty of empty seats as the captains meet out at midfield for the ceremonial coin toss. For West Virginia, Robert Pickett, Bo Orlando, Kevin Koken, and John Stroya. Take a look at the series history, the first meeting between the Mountaineers and the Pirates, 1970. West Virginia has never lost to East Carolina University. A year ago, the Mountaineer offense woke up in Morgantown, scoring 49 points in a 49 to nothing win. And since that game, where the Mountaineers put 49 on the board, they're averaging 38 points in their last 13 games. The last time the Mountaineers played here at Ficklin Stadium, though, it was an entirely different story as Mike Timko had to hit Harvey Smith with a touchdown pass with just six seconds remaining to come away with a 24-21 victory over the Pirates of East Carolina. West Virginia University has won the toss, and they have deferred until the second half of play. Well, the Mountaineers come into this game after a mistake game a week ago. I guess you could call it a problem-filled game. John Garcia, they committed six turnovers, four fumbles and two interceptions, and 13 penalties, but were still able to come away with their fifth straight victory over the Virginia Tech Hokies. The Mountaineers, sixth in the United Press International Coaches Poll, seventh according to the Associated Press Poll, and the Mountaineers' highest ranking ever back in 1983 when they were fourth with that 6-0 record, and that's what they'll try to achieve here this afternoon, six consecutive victories. Obviously, Coach uh, Nealon is concerned about the wind here. We have a strong wind from our left to our right, Tony, and that was probably the reason why he deferred the kickoff. West Virginia University's all-time winningest coach, Don Nealon, 63 victories in Morgantown, over 50 victories, while the head coach at Bowling Green, 110 total victories in his career. Brad Carroll, will handle the kickoff chores for West Virginia for the third straight week. If you'll remember, Charlie Bauman, the Mountaineer field goal kicker, had been handling the kickoffs for the first several games, but they feel that Carroll's got the stronger leg, and he did a good job a week ago at Virginia Tech, placing the ball several times into the end zone for touchbacks. Junior Robinson, number 21, is the deep threat for East Carolina. He's back there along with Reggie McKinney, and we're all set to get underway. The West Virginia Mountaineers and the Pirates of East Carolina University. Carroll 
Giants kick will be taken one yard in by Junior Robinson. Robinson crosses over the 20-yard line, and he breaks free. Across midfield, Robinson hemmed in, and he'll be knocked out of bounds at the 44-yard line inside West Virginia University territory. A 64-yard return to start the game off by Junior Robinson. There's no doubt, Tony, that this East Carolina team is going to have a lot of talent down here, just shown by Junior Robinson's speed breaking loose on the kickoff return. So excellent field position for Coach Art Baker's club. First down and 10. They spot the ball on the 35-yard line. Charlie Labretto is the quarterback. And the option toss on the first play of the game. Over there to... East Carolina's Reggie McKinney as Ronaldo Turnbull comes over to make the stop. Junior out of St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. Ronaldo second on the team in tackles with 40. We're going to see a lot of different multiple formations by the East Carolina offense. The majority of the time with one back in the backfield. Four-yard pickup by McKinney. Labretto looks to throw a broken play. Man is open, and that is Reggie McKinney inside the 15-yard line. A 20-yard pickup. Labretto looked as though the play was broken. Bo Orlando finally came over to make the stop on Reggie McKinney, a senior out of Mount Olive, North Carolina. The West Virginia coaching staff is really impressed with Labretto and his ability to be able to scramble and find the open receiver. Charlie Labretto did a great job that time. First down and 10 from the Mountaineer 12-yard line. Beautiful stop there by West Virginia's Ronaldo Turnbull as Labretto was looking for the option. Dumped back at the 15-yard line. It'll be a three-yard loss, and Turnbull picks up his second tackle of the ball game. Tony, we'll see two different type options today, the freeze option and the trap option. That particular one was a free freeze option. Ronaldo did a great job. East Carolina Pirates using a double slot formation. So you've only got a single man in the backfield, and that's McKinney in motion. Second down and 13. Jared Moody, the receiver, and they'll call it a good catch. Inside the 15-yard line, down to the 14. Bo Orlando, West Virginia strong safety, coming over to make the stop. When the offense spreads you, spreads you out with this type of formation, it really limits what you can do defensively. It's very hard to play man coverage with four people wideouts like that. Again, they show the four wideouts. Tim James, the fullback, the lone man in the backfield. Third down and 11, Libretto overthrows the intended receiver. That was Reggie McKinney. Bo Orlando is back on the coverage for West Virginia. 12 minutes and 29 seconds to go. First quarter of play. That brings up a fourth down and long, and Rob Imperato will come on to try the field goal. A sophomore from Boca Raton. Five of nine this season. He's made his last three in a row. Against South Carolina, he missed three in a row. A 30-yard attempt by Imperato. It's high enough, and it is no good. The wind took it, blowing it to the left. And the Mountaineers stop the East Carolina Pirates after a 64-yard kickoff return by Junior Robinson. So the Pirates threaten, but West Virginia holds. And the Mountaineers will start off first and 10 from the 20-yard line with 12.25 to go here in the first quarter of play. Major Harris at the controls for the West Virginia Mountaineers. Major coming off his best passing performance as a Mountaineer a week ago, throwing for 205 yards against the Virginia Tech Hokies. Adrian Moss begins the game for West Virginia at the tight end position. Craig Taylor, the ball carrier, a five-yard pickup for the senior out of Linden, New Jersey. So Moss starts at tight end for the Mountaineers. That's because Keith Wynn has been bothered all week long by a bruised muscle in the shoulder. It's going to be very difficult for East Carolina to sit in there and punch with us with 50 to 60 plays today. So we anticipate a lot of stunning, and that's one of the reasons why they have so many different players in there for East Carolina. 
Three minutes gone by. A.B. Brown dumped behind the line of scrimmage for a one-yard loss. A.B. is looking to become the first West Virginia Mountaineer to rush for over, to rush for 300 yards in consecutive weeks. No Mountaineer has rushed for over 100 yards three straight weeks since Robert Alexander did it way back in October of 1980. Brown had 110 yards against Pitt, 191 yards a week ago against Virginia Tech, and looking for the century mark again here today. Brown, the intended receiver, can't make the catch. And that'll bring up fourth down for West Virginia, and Lance Carrion will have to come on the field. So the Pirate defense, which has undergone a major facelifting from a week ago with nine new players in there, holds off West Virginia. Carrion's punt, a nice one, a high spiraler. And that ball was touched and then knocked out of bounds. And fortunately, East Carolina will maintain possession. Lance having a very good year. They're, they're this year with 44-yard average. This copyrighted broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by West Virginia University through its Mountaineer Sports Network solely for the entertainment of our viewing audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the description and accounts of this game without the express written permission of the Mountaineer Sports Network is prohibited. The announcers on this broadcast are employed by the Mountaineer Sports Network. References to products made are paid commercial messages. So East Carolina starting off first down and 10 from their 22-yard line. And the play is blown dead as flags fly, motion along the line of scrimmage. Flags. 11 minutes and six seconds to go here in the first period. As we take a look at Charlie Libretto, wearing number 10 for the East Carolina Pirates. And you can see Libretto and Travis Hunter, who share quarterbacking chores for East Carolina, have been doing a good job, averaging 426 yards of total offense per game. But that defense is letting the offense down, giving up 418 yards. Motion penalty against East Carolina drives them back five yards, so it is first and 15 from the 15-yard line. Libretto on the option toss, going to McKinney. Knocked out. After a five-yard pickup by Darrell Whitmore. Reggie McKinney, a senior from Mount Olive, North Carolina, a week ago, rushed for his 1,000th yard as an East Carolina Pirate in four seasons. He's averaging 5.6 yards per carry. Comes into the ball game this afternoon with 232 yards on 39 carries. One yard loss on the play, and so it is second down and 11. Libetto, third attempt of the afternoon. Whitmore's after it, and that is an interception for Daryl Whitmore. The red-shirted freshman from Front Royal, Virginia, scooped that ball up just before it hit the turf. A week ago, he had an interception against Virginia Tech, and then an apparent second interception that was ruled no good. Whitmore claims that he cleanly had the second interception a week ago, but this one was clean as it could be as Whitmore comes up to make the scoop interception, giving West Virginia excellent field position. First and 10 from the 37-yard line. That's Kelvin Phillips in motion. Greg Taylor, the ball carrier. Go. Michael Applewhite, left defensive tackle, coming over to make the stop on Craig Taylor. Craig Taylor on the carry for the Mountaineers, tackled by the Pirates. Taylor's gained over 200 yards on the ground this season for the Mountaineers, 214 coming into this one on 39 carries. They give him four, so it's second down and well, call it second down and seven. Three-yard pickup. Major Harris. And that ball is loose. West Virginia has recovered. So both teams having problems holding on to it early. West Virginia very fortunate on that one, Tony. The ball bouncing right in front of uh, A.B. Brown. The play is recovered by West Virginia's Calvin Phillips. Brown really never had control in Kelvin Phillips there. The ball on top of it. 
This is what Coach Neal talked about all week, is get back to our concentration and come out and execute and play good football. Mountaineers line up under Johnson as a receiver to the right. This is something new. On third down and five. Harris with plenty of time. Ball is deflected. Gain Singletary. The left defensive end got his hand on Major Harris's pass. Harris was looking for Andre Johnson, who lined up as a receiver. Johnson normally a tailback for the Mountaineers, and that'll bring up fourth down. And Charlie Bauman will come on. Bauman will be shotting a 49-yard attempt. Into the wind, Bauman's kick is good. Charlie Bauman with his longest field goal of the season, a 49-yard boot as West Virginia takes the lead three to nothing. Well, the Mountaineers off of a 49-yard field goal by Charlie Bauman take the early lead. John Garcia, both teams offensively have had some problems holding on to the football. Fortunately, the Mountaineers have a guy like Bauman they can go to who converts from 49 yards away. That's a career long for Charlie Bauman. His longest coming into the game was 47, but he hit that one from 49 away. As far as holding on to the ball, the weather is definitely not a factor. On the field, anyway, the sun's out. It's probably 60 degrees. Up here in the booth, it's a little bit colder. Yeah, it is. Now I know why. what you mean by an open-air booth. <laughs> Junior, Robinson. Junior Robinson is back deep to return as Brad Carroll. No doubt will be trying to kick away from Robinson. Junior Robinson with a 64-yard return to start the ball game off, but the Pirates were unable to convert. And notice this time, Tony, West Virginia kicking it from the left hash. So they'll try to stay away from Robinson. And they do. Reggie McKinney will have no return. That'll be a touchback. East Carolina will start off. First down and 10 from their 20-yard line. Reggie McKinney. Well, the West Virginia Mountaineers won't soon forget their last game here at Ficklin Stadium back in 1986. A game they struggled throughout, but were able to win as Mike Timko Threw a pass in the end zone to Harvey Smith that was caught for a touchdown with just six seconds remaining, and West Virginia escaped, literally, with a 24-21 victory over the Pirates. A year ago, the Mountaineers manhandled ECU 49 to nothing. Libretto on the option. It goes to McKinney, and he bobbles it out of bounds. They'll lose a yard on the play, bringing up second down and 11. Willie Edwards, the right quarterback for the Mountaineers out of Morgantown, Played the play beautifully as McKinney was looking up. The ball batted off of his hands. That play was was executed very good by the West Virginia defense. Again, when you play against an option team, it's assignment defense. There has to be somebody on the dive. There has to be somebody on the pitch. There has to be somebody on the quarterback. West Virginia playing it to perfection that time. Pirates again showing the double slot formation. And again, Libretto looking to run the option. Libretto breaking free as Bo Orlando drags him down at the 40-yard line. A 21-yard pickup by Charlie Libretto, who really isn't known as a running quarterback. Comes into the ball game with 132 yards rushing on 31 carries. Theron Ellis, the inside linebacker, has to keep that ball on his inside shoulder. He got outside. Charlie cut it back to the inside. East Carolina's been struggling on first down so far. They've gained just one yard on first down plays. This is first and 10 from the 41. The fullback is Tim James, held up by Orlando and finally brought down. Lonnie Brockman making the stop as Orlando made the initial hit. James is one of a long line of strong and powerful East Carolina fullbacks. He played in the shadow of Anthony Simpson, who was drafted by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And in his senior year, it's time for Tim James to play, although he has been slowed by a bruised foot. They say that he's at 100%. Suffered the foot injury against Southern Mississippi. Seven-yard pickup, and so it is second down and three. And again, they go to James, but this time the running room is tough as Chris Herring meets James at midfield and sets him down. In fact, Tony, the last three fullbacks that have played for East, uh, East Carolina are presently in the NFL. Simpson was a strong one. He's gone. 
Looking back to that 1986 game, Simpson gave the Mountaineers all kinds of problems. He's currently playing with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Third down and two for East Carolina. They go to James, and he's got the first down yardage. Crosses into West Virginia territory at the 49. Lonnie Brockman, the junior out of Pittsburgh, rolled him up. But not before James got across the first down marker. The pro scouts feel that James has more potential than any of the three former fullbacks here at East Carolina. Definite pro possibility. You're right, John. Seven minutes and 25 seconds to go in the first quarter as Gerard Moody comes in motion. So three receivers over to the left side, and that's where Libretto looks. The pressure is on. The ball is loose. West Virginia has it. Michael Fox came over. He's got the fumble. The West Virginia offense is on as Mike Fox comes up. Wait a second. They're not going to call it a fumble. They say he was in the act of throwing the football, so they're going to call it an incomplete forward pass. Well, that might be worth a couple of looks. Brings it back to the 44-yard line. Second down and 19. Libretto looking over for Denell Harper and Bo Orlando on the coverage. That's a prime example of the run and shoot offense. And East Carolina's offensive coordinator is formerly from the, from the Canadian Football League, so he has a lot of experience in that wide open football that East Carolina will play today. Charlie Libretto will be looking at third down and 19. That's Reggie McKinney in motion. Pressure is on. Deron Ellis makes the stop. A beautiful hit on Tim James, the fullback. Ellis met him right at the 40-yard line, and the Pirates will be forced to punt. You mentioned Theron Ellis earlier, John, that he didn't play the option just right as Libretto had a nice run from scrimmage. But there, he played the screen pass perfectly as he met James chest to chest. John Jett is the punter for the East Carolina Pirates coming into the game, averaging 39 and a half yards per kick. Grannis Bell from the 20-yard line, breaking free. This is Grannis Bell. Knocked out of bounds at the 33-yard line. A beautiful piece of work with not much territory to do it in for West Virginia senior Grannis Bell, a 38-yard punt by John Jett. 5.56 to go. West Virginia leads it 3 to nothing. West Virginia University starting off first and 10 from the 33-yard line. Mountaineers lead it three to nothing. Andre Johnson into the ball game for West Virginia, breaking free, and he'll have the first down. Andre Johnson, finally brought down there by Brian Haywood. Andre, and a reserve role, has scored five touchdowns this season. Number 79, Brian Smiter coming up the middle on an inside fold block. Just about wiped out the whole interior line of East Carolina. From the 44-yard line, it's Craig Taylor. Brought down by freshman linebacker Robert Jones. A couple of changes in the West Virginia lineup. To begin with, you've got Andre Johnson in there. In place of A.B. Brown. Brown did start the ball game, but fumbled the football away. And you've also got Adrian Moss in at tight end for the Mountaineers in place of Keith Wynn, who's been bothered by a bruised shoulder. Two-yard pickup, three-yard pickup, second down and seven. And again, Johnson gets the call, looking to turn the corner. Andre Johnson has another West Virginia first down. Do you think Don Neal a little disappointed in A.B.'s ability to hold on to the ball here early, Tony? Well, apparently, that's it. 
because Brown is not is not receiving treatment down on the sideline for any injury that we can tell. And so well, that, perhaps the coach is sending a message. That's one thing that makes West Virginia a great football team. Here you are, a starter, and the second team come, guy comes in and does a good job. Andre Johnson again gets the call and a big hole for Andre. A block from Jamie Lamont and Johnson down to the East Carolina 19-yard line. Or should I say a great job? Without question, one of the best reserve tailbacks in all of college football. Andre Johnson, senior out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. His career has been that of a reserve, and he's moved himself to become West Virginia's 10th all-time ground gainer as a reserve. Andre ex extremely quick on his ability to be able to cut back. Johnson again gets the call as a penalty flag flies. Johnson down to the 16-yard line. Robert Jones there to meet him. Looks like we can get a holding call from West Virginia. Purple captain. So the Mountaineers will be pushed back. Like we were talking last night in the hotel room, Tony, that uh, these three tailbacks are probably better than any of the tailbacks that I was associated with at West Virginia. Mountaineers have run themselves into a streak of strong tailbacks with A.B. Brown, Andre Johnson, Eugene Napoleon. Don Nealon says his club cannot afford to make the penalties that they did a week ago against Virginia Tech and still win football games. Was the first against the Mountaineers, a holding penalty, bringing them back to the 30 yard line. Andre Johnson knocked back at the line of scrimmage. Mike Applewhite was there to make the hit. Mike Applewhite, a junior, 6'3, 255. We're going to see a lot of this guy. He's defensive player of the week against South Carolina. The crowd reacting as Major Harris handed the ball off, he was hammered. And Mountaineer fans here booing the call. They were looking for a late hit on quarterback Major Harris. East Carolina plays a, a variation of the wide tackle six with those two defensive tackles. Second down and 22 facing the Mountaineers. And Harris looking deep. Going for Jamie Lamont, wide open. Down to the nine yard line. Ricky Terrain, the right cornerback, was there, but Lamont was wide open. Our big guys up front doing a great job protecting Major Harris. Jamie coming up with a big play. That's his eighth reception for the year. Jamie had a big week at Virginia Tech last Saturday as he caught four passes from Major Harris. He was named co-hustler for his efforts against Virginia Tech. Andre Johnson has the first down for West Virginia as he brings it up to the five-yard line. Robert Jones again making the stop on Andre Johnson. He had a very productive game against the Pirates a season ago in Morgantown when he had 99 yards, and he's already got 53 here this afternoon with just under three minutes to go in the first quarter of play. First down for the Mountaineers, so it's first and goal from the five-yard line. A week ago, West Virginia had a first and goal situation on two occasions and had to settle for field goals. Johnson again, the ball carrier, with the whole touchdown. <laughs> touchdown number six of the season for Andre Johnson. The Mountaineers lead it nine to nothing with two minutes and 38 seconds to go here in the first quarter of play. The extra point is in. West Virginia really needed to punch that in there to be able to build that confidence back from the uh, inability to get into the end zone last week. Charlie Bauman, 25 of 26 with extra points this season. That one is good, and West Virginia takes a 10 to nothing lead with 2.38 to go here in the first quarter of play. One of the things that makes Under a great tailback is his ability and his vision to see those seams. He does a good job and he has a nose for the football. Seems like this guy's been around forever. Got to give some credit there to that offensive line for the Mountaineers. Rick Phillips, John Stroya, and Craig Taylor coming up from his fullback position, making key blocks on that play. And Under 
walked it right in for West Virginia's first touchdown. If you remember about four years ago, Under had a 206-yard effort against Temple his freshman year. The Mountaineers marching 68 yards in seven plays, using up three minutes and 18 seconds as Johnson scores it from five yards away. So despite the holding penalty, which brought up a second down and 22, West Virginia was able to score. You can see the West Virginia offense very productive and the Mountaineer defense very stingy. Mountaineers with that 43 point per game average are fourth nationally in scoring. As we take a look at Junior Robinson who began the game with a bang, a 64 yard return. Believe it or not, John, that was not Robinson's longest kick return of the season. He ran one back for a touchdown from 98 yards away to start the season against Tennessee Tech. They kick it away from Robinson and this is Reggie McKinney at the 20 yard line up to the 23 yard line. McKinney still up. Finally brought down to the 30. Talk about extra effort. A tremendous return there by Reggie McKinney. He's averaging 24 yards a return this season. And a tremendous effort by the senior. He was a question mark in 1987 season with a severe back injury and it's come along real well. So the East Carolina Pirates will start it off from their 30-yard line, trailing it 10 to nothing. Quarterback Charlie Libretto still in there. And he's going to have to call a timeout. First timeout taken in the ball game. Timeout. Libretto has had a, what you could call, rocky career at East Carolina. Two years ago when the Mountaineers the played here, Libretto, a true like freshman, made his first like start. Since that time, Libretto has quit this football team on two different occasions and really didn't come back to the team until late August of this season uh, before the coaches said, yes, if you do want to come back, you can come back. And so he started off the season as a reserve a week ago. He made the start against Southwest Louisiana and played very well, completing 11 of 20 passes for 163 yards. Scored three touchdowns by himself on the run in the first half of that game. Threw another touchdown pass later in the game, but the end result was loss number four of the season for East Carolina as they bowed to Southwest Louisiana, 48 to 36. Mountaineer defense has given up just 52 yards in total offense so far on 12 plays from the Pirates. Tim James, the fullback with room. Met by Chris Herring and Daryl Whitmore and a penalty flag flies. Fullback Tim James carries the football into the line for the Pirates. Herring there, Five making the stop the on James. West Virginia. There are flags down on the play. Chris will go against East Carolina. A holding penalty will drive him back. Chris had a super game against Virginia Tech last week. A couple beautiful stops on the draw, and he was named defensive champion for his effort. The penalty is against East Carolina. Tony, how those? Take a look at the hold on this play. It is still right there. You see it. Turnbull was trying to come over, and he had his arms taken from behind. So a 10-yard penalty will bring up first down and 20 from the Pirate 19-yard line. Libretto on the quarterback draw. Orlando has him. Back at the 21-yard line. Mo Orlando, the senior from Berwick, Pennsylvania, read it beautifully, and another penalty marker is down. That was great assignment football by West Virginia. Chris Herring sitting right there making Liberetto go to the outside. Bo Orlando coming up, making a good play, keeping that ball to the inside. And Bo got the hand up near Libretto's mask, and they've got the penalty down, and that's a face mask against West Virginia. An unintentional face mask, so a five-yard penalty. A face mask, five yards on the defense, still first down. The penalty is against West Virginia for a face mask. So penalties on. It is now first down. Successive plays. 
First down and 15. The man was wide open there, Al Whiting, but he slipped down as Willie Edwards was back on the coverage. Whiting was open, he slipped as he was making his turn towards the ball. East Carolina with this wide open offensive tack, Coach Kralavich told me last night that uh, in all the films that they watched, five games, he only ran 20 traditional plays, the isolation in the sweep. The rest has been some type of wide open attack. Second down and 15, a passing situation for Libretto. He's two of six so far in the game. Has time. The Ron Ellis almost had himself an interception. Ball was intended there for Walter Wilson. And Theron Ellis is going to remember that one for a while. Junior out of Norristown, Pennsylvania. That'll bring up third down and 15. Pirates are one of three on third down conversions. One minute and 54 seconds to go. First quarter of play. West Virginia leads it 10 to nothing. Pressure is on, Libretto is down, Robert Pickett with the sack. Back at the 15-yard line. Robert Pickett, the senior from Miami, Florida, makes the hit. And John Jett will be brought on to punt. A big play by Robert, Robert Pickett. That time, West Virginia brought both inside linebackers on a stunt. Brannis Bell is back deep to return for the Mountaineers. A poor kick by Jet. Bell will let it die. And the Mountaineers will start off at their own 42-yard line, first and 10, with one minute and 16 seconds to go here in the first quarter of play. From there, the fans, don't forget that Mountaineer Sports Night is coming your way next Friday evening on MSN Television. Host Woody O'Hara will look at today's highlights along with talking with head coach Don Nealon. We'll also be reviewing West Virginia's first six games. Consult your local listings for the time in your area. Quarterback Major Harris has not put the ball up, but once so far in the ball game. Here comes pass attempt number two. Wide open, it's Adrian Moss, the Mountaineer tight end, down to the 41-yard line. First down for West Virginia. Robert Jones, number 44, made the stop on Adrian Moss. <laughs> This is the biggest day for Adrian Moss in his Mountaineer career as he draws the start. He had been sharing time along with Keith Wynn and Daryl Mitchell, but he started off this ball game and has played the entire quarter. He also played in all 12 games last year. Under a minute to go, first quarter. Harris on the option with a seam. Knocked down by Robert Jones, also coming in to make the stop, James Singletary. As we get a look at West Virginia sophomore quarterback, Major Harris. Major rushed for 55 yards a week ago against Virginia Tech, but if you'd ask him, he'd say it was one of his poor performances in the Mountaineer uniform. He was responsible for five of West Virginia's six turnovers. Andre Johnson on second down and six. Running room is tough. And Mike Applewhite was there to make the hit. Final seconds ticking off the first quarter clock. West Virginia will take a 10 to nothing lead at the end of the first quarter of play. Andre Johnson with a five yard touchdown run gives the Mountaineers the TD. We'll be back after this. The Mountaineers take a 10 to nothing lead as we're set to begin second quarter of play. West Virginia will have the ball at the East Carolina 36 yard line. Under Johnson, the leading ground gainer in that first quarter for West Virginia. The senior out of Fort Lauderdale with 53 yards on six carries. Harris has Granis Bell. Grannis down to the 25, first down, West Virginia. Donald Porch brought down Grannis Bell as Grannis has his first catch of the ball game. Senior from Fort Lauderdale comes into the ball game with just three catches. Wide open there as Porch got caught behind.
Andre Johnson in at tailback. Craig Taylor, the fullback. This is Johnson. He's got room. Johnson down to the 19-yard line. Robert Jones makes the stop on Andre Johnson. If you look on the back of the West Virginia helmets, Tony, you see muskets. And for every big play, whether it's a big run or a fumble recovery, they're given those muskets for their achievements. Mountaineers marching after their second touchdown of the ball game. Bauman hit a 49-yard field goal, and Andre Johnson ran one in from five yards away to give West Virginia a 10-0 lead. Craig Taylor closed it quickly down to the 17. We were talking about A.B. Brown as to why he wasn't playing, and there's the reason. An ice pack taped up on the back of that right leg. A.B. has been plagued by hamstring problems. Really took him out of last year's games for the most part. He was still able to rush for over 900 yards. Adrian Moss has the ball and the touchdown for the West Virginia Mountaineers. Moss came into the game and didn't have a single reception. He has two here already in the ball game, and his second one goes for an 18-yard TD as West Virginia takes a 16-0 lead with 13.26 to go here in the first half of play. I think Adrian was surprised he didn't get hit on that one. He kind of eased up a little bit as he coasted into the end zone. He was looking around for contact but couldn't <laughs> find any, so he settled himself into the end zone. He said, it, could, it can't be this easy. Charlie Bauman's extra point attempt is good. And West Virginia leads it 17 to nothing with 13.26 to go here in the second quarter of play. Quarterback Major Harris takes a breather as he fires a touchdown pass to Adrian Moss, giving West Virginia a 17 to nothing lead. Major really put the zip on that ball. I mean, he cocked that thing way back. Again, plenty of time for Major to look for his receiver. And Adrian are coming across on a drag pattern. This guy's 250 pounds, and he's going to be hard to bring down. That was Harris's fourth touchdown pass of the season, and Adrian Moss's second catch of the year, as mentioned earlier, and first touchdown pass as a West Virginia Mountaineer. He's a junior out of Cocoa Beach, Florida. And John mentioned he's got some great physical attributes, six feet, five inches tall, and 250 pounds. Well, they're going to put Charlie Bauman out as the West Virginia offense gets together on the sideline with the exterior line coach Dave McMichael. Charlie Bauman will come on to handle the kickoff. Brad Carroll kicked the first three off. He's probably going to keep it low, Tony, because of the wind, and that way Carroll can put that ball up into the wind and get it down into the end zone. Let's see what happens. This one will be taken by Junior Robinson. Robinson knocked down by Willie Edwards over the 27-yard line. The man that they didn't want to return it, Junior Robinson. Up to the 27. Robinson with the 64-yard return to start this ball game off. They think he's one of the finest athletes ever to play at East Carolina. He's also a member of the East Carolina University 4 by 100 meter relay team. So that tells you something about his speed. And a year ago, they qualified for the NCAA National Championships. 4-4 four, four speed in the 40. Pirates begin this drive from their 27-yard line. Libretto on the option will keep. Over for West Virginia to make the stop. Steve Grant, a freshman linebacker out of Miami, Florida. As far as a run to pass ratio, Tony, the East Carolina Pirates are about 70-30, 70% run, 30% pass. A lot of motion from the East Carolina offense as they go into the double slot formation. The fullback, Tim James. Close to the first down marker. Needs the 37-yard line for the first down. Really?
really all that motion is, is a tailback lined up in a wing, and he comes around just like a tailback would on the option. So it's just a way to confuse the defense. Libretto has been intercepted once this afternoon. On the season, East, Par East Carolina quarterbacks have thrown 10, make it 11 interceptions, 10 coming into this game. So the interception has been the problem for East Carolina when it comes to the turnover. They really haven't fumbled it that much and lost the ball on fumbles just twice. James's run is good for the first down. They've also been very lucky. They've fumbled 15 times and recovered all but two. Yeah, that's right. Irish from the 37-yard line. Long count here by Labretto. West Virginia reading the option well. A two-yard pickup by Charlie Labretto. Dale Jackson coming over to make the stop. Jackson working himself back into the Mountaineer lineup after a knee injury. This is what you and I argued about last night, Tony. They had three guys moving at the same time. Then they're set for that second, and then they put the man in motion. I wouldn't call it an argument last night. <laughs> Nothing was thrown that I can remember. How about a debate? <laughs> Second down and eight. The quick pass intended for Reggie McKinney and Preston Waters on the coverage for West Virginia. Labretto is struggling, two of eight passing so far. A week ago, threw the ball very well. 11 of 20 is what he finished up with, 163 yards through the air. But so far this afternoon, two of eight. He ranks seventh in East Carolina University history as far as passing yard at 1,649 yards. ECU is one of four in third down conversions. This is third down and eight. Ball's batted away by Dale Jackson, and the Pirates will be forced to punt. A beautiful play there by Dale Jackson, the senior out of Canton, Ohio. Gill coming on with a big pass rush, getting those hands up in the air to limit the quarterback's vision. A great job by Dale. Jackson, as we mentioned, battling back from a knee injury, a knee sprain that kept him out of a couple games. Bad snap. Jack gets the kickoff, and a nice one with the wind behind him. No return, and the Mountaineers will start off first and ten from the nine-yard line. So Jet, just a freshman, does a good job in taking that ball off the turf on a poor snap, and the Mountaineers will start off from their nine. West Virginia leads it 17 to nothing. 11.08 to go here in the first half of play. For all you Mountaineer fans watching in on WCHS TV 8 in Charleston, this bud's for you. So the Mountaineers will start off with what will be their poorest field position of the ball game. Under Johnson staying in at tailback. A.B. Brown on the sideline with a nice pack on the right leg. Johnson up the middle. Met there by Shane Hubble and James Singletary. A.B.'s legs are so darn big and muscular, he seems to always have trouble with those things when the weather gets a little bit cold. One of the nicest kids on the West Virginia University team, Andre Johnson. I wonder if there's any, been any scientific research done on hamstrings, Tony. I have, I've heard that there has been. <laughs> we'll get into that a little bit later. On second down and five, Johnson breaks free for the first down. Ahead to the 28-yard line, met there by Anthony Thompson. Andre Gives himself a pat on the fist there. Thought he could get a little bit more on a big hole opening up there by that offensive line for the Mountaineers. Kevin Koken, Bob Kovac. Under quite an athlete, a 34 and a half inch vertical jump and a 4440. Johnson working on a 100 yard outing here. 75 yards on nine carries. On first and 10, Harris looks to put it into the air and he's got his tight end again. It's Adrian Moss and Moss has his third catch of the ball game. 
bringing it ahead to the 37-yard line. Knocked out of bounds there by Robert Jones. And you take a look at Moss and just see how big that he is. 6'5", 250 pounds, and he's having himself his career in one afternoon here with three catches. He came into the ball game with no, no catches through the first five games of the season. He's almost like a tackle with the ability to run and catch. Ten-minute mark of the second quarter of play. Andre Johnson got himself caught up there with Bob Kovac, the right guard for the Mountaineers, as Robert Jones came over to make the hit on Andre Johnson. Tackled by Robert Jones of the Pirates. It is second down. Mountaineers averaging 43 points per game. East Carolina comes in, their offense, averaging 29 points per game. So two good offensive clubs. The question coming into this one was which defense would hold. And so far, it's the Mountaineer defense that's been doing the job. Major Harris drops the football, and East Carolina has it. The fumble comes back to haunt the Mountaineers' Major Harris. A week ago, he was hit and coughed up five turnovers. And this time he was holding and holding and holding and got hit back there and stripped on the play by James Singletary, number 58, popped it free. And Mike Applewhite, number 88, was there to pick it up. Give credit to Singletary. He just stuck his hand in there and popped it out. Pirates have it first and 10 at the West Virginia 36-yard line. Looking for their first points of the game. A quarterback switch. Travis Hunter working the ball over to Darren Bynum, our reserve flanker. Jim Gray came over to make the stop along with Bo Orlando. East Carolina throwing a little wrinkle in there. They called the play on the sidelines, ran out to the field, and immediately lined up and showed the reverse. So we've got a quarterback switch as Libretto, who was struggling, passing two of eight, comes in and goes out. And Travis Hunter's into the ball game. Five feet, 11 inches tall, 185 pounds. Lost the starting job after starting the first four games for the Pirates. Reggie McKinney, the ball carrier. Met there by Steve Grant. And that's one thing about using a two-quarterback system. There seemed to be a little bit of spark when that kid came in there. Hunter was the starting quarterback a season ago when the Pirates came to Morgantown to play West Virginia. Third down and five. That's Moody in motion. Hunter will look to throw. Herring is after Travis Hunter, and he's got the first down. Knocked down at the 21-yard line, and now we've got a flag coming down late. A late hit call will go against the Mountaineers. Steve Grant was over. A broken play as Hunter had the thought of passing initially, and this is his strength, running with the football. It's just a foot race there between Chris Herring and num number five, Travis Grant. Number four, Steve Grant, a little bit overzealous there. Cost us 15 yards. So the Pirates have the ball at the 10-yard line on the 15-yard penalty. Seven minutes and 55 seconds to go, first half. West Virginia leads it 17 to nothing. The fullback, James, the ball is loose. And the Pirates recover it. Good job by the interior defensive line, Chris Parker. Mike Fox there, along with Chris Harry. As Hunter came up with the ball after making the handoff to Tim James. West Virginia substituting the big guys, Summits, Fox, and Theron Ellis. Virginia 12-yard line. 
The option toss going to McKinney. Hit out of bounds there by Chris Herring and Daryl Whitmore. Bringing it down to the six yard line. This is third down. The Pirates can get a first down without scoring. The first down marker, if you take a look there at the pylon to your top of the screen, is right on the goal line, so they could conceivably get a first and goal situation. This is third down and six. Hunter, first pass is deflected. Chris Herring who's been all over the field for the Mountaineers this afternoon, deflected Hunter's pass into the end zone. And that will bring up fourth down, and Rob Imperato will come on as Hunter goes to the bench. And Hunter's only 5'11", it's awful difficult for him to see over the big guys with their hands up, and that was one benefit that time. Imperato missed earlier in the ball game from 30 yards away. This will be a 22-yard attempt. He's got the wind behind him, Imperato's kick is good. And with seven minutes to go here in the first half of play, the Pirates hit the board, West Virginia 17, East Carolina three. Well, John, a West Virginia fumble gives East Carolina field position inside Mountaineer territory, and they're able to manage a field goal from 22 yards away as they score their first point, 17 to three. Mountaineers have the lead with seven minutes to go here in the first half. As we said last week, Tony, any time there's a fumble inside your own field position, that's considered a sudden change. A field goal is considered a stop, so West Virginia defense did a good job that time. Imperato, who just kicked the 22-yard field goal, will handle the kickoff for ECU. Ball will roll out of bounds, and they'll have to move it back five yards. Got to be a little bit cold out there with no sock on. I'm telling you, I'm cold up here with two socks on. <laughs> <laughs> Mountaineers will have an off week next week, and then they'll open up a two-game homestand taking on Boston College and the Penn State Nittany Lions to close out the month of October. Mountaineer fans should take note that the Boston College game is now an official sellout. The Penn State game had sold out earlier. So the only tickets remaining for Mountaineer fans this season for home games will be the Syracuse game, which will be the 11th game of the season. Mountaineer offense comes into this ball game, averaging 487 yards, and you can see that they're already over the 100 mark with seven minutes to go here in the second quarter of play. Imperato's kick will be taken by Eugene Napoleon. He muffs it. Napoleon from the five-yard line. He'll bring it up to the seven. And a penalty marker comes down on the play. So Napoleon made the mistake. Now let's see which team made the mistake. The preliminary signal will be a penalty against West Virginia. East Carolina lining up in a kind of funny kickoff coverage. This is the first time I've ever seen that. In my years associated with football, everybody seemed to line up close to one another. We're tipping. The penalty is against West, West Virginia. Virginia. Penalty against the Mountaineers will bring the ball back to the four-yard line. Both teams have committed three penalties apiece. Major Harris on the option free. He's looking for Reggie Rembert. And overthrown is Rembert out at midfield. Ricky Turan was back on the coverage. Boy, Major really put the air under the ball on that time. I mean, that was almost 55 yards from his own end zone, 55 yards in the air against the wind. Rembert had the double coverage beat. But as you saw, the ball just a little bit too far. Don Nealon sending a play there, trying to make it all back quickly as they're hemmed into their end zone on second down and 10 from the four. Under Johnson, 
ahead to the 11-yard line. Andre Johnson carries the football for the Mountaineers. Brian Haywood coming over to make the stop. At the onset, we told you A.B. Brown was going for his third straight 100-yard game. Well, Andre Johnson now is making a strong move towards a 100-yard afternoon. Andre with 83 yards on 11 carries. Quarterback Major Harris, who comes into the ball game with a four-yard average per carry, has been held to two yards so far. On third down, Harris will take a timeout. Six minutes and 10 seconds to go. First half of play. West Virginia leads it 17 to 3. Let's go, Forrest! A beautiful look at a beautiful area of the country, Greenville, North Carolina. Ficklin Stadium is the site, homecoming 1988, but so far homecoming has not been going all that well for the home team as West Virginia leads it by 14 with six minutes and 10 seconds to go here in the second quarter of play. West Virginia is looking at a third down and three. Quarterback Major Harris forced to call a timeout there as East Carolina set their defense up. In the second period, Georgia 17. Vanderbilt. East Carolina has won 16 of the last 17 homecoming games here. The single man in the backfield is Aaron Evans. Quick pitch. East Carolina has it read beautifully. Ryan Haywood, the rover back, and Robert Jones, number 44, were there to make the stop. Notice the momentum swing like we saw last week against Virginia Tech, Tony. So the Mountaineers can manage only seven yards on that possession. They started off from their four. Lance carry on from two yards into the end zone. This is Bynum from the 39-yard line. Slowed down by Levinas and brought down at the 45. Johnny Stroya came over to make the stop on Bynum. And the Pirates will have good field position to start this one off. Chuck Levinas having a great year on his specialty teams. He was named special teams champion for his effort versus Virginia Tech last week. Travis Hunter will stay in at quarterback for East Carolina. Charlie Libretto began the game. Was ineffective passing, just two of ten. And Coach Art Baker put in this man, Travis Hunter, a junior from Winter Garden, Florida. Drove his club down for a field goal on his first possession. 5.29 to go here, first half of play. The ball carrier, the fullback, Tim James, met there by Theron Ellis and Lonnie Brockman, down to the 49-yard line. You mentioned Coach Art Baker. He has a wealth of experience underneath his belt, Tony. He was assistant head coach at Florida State under Bobby Bowden in 1983. That's Lonnie Brockman there, junior out of Pittsburgh, who was one of two Mountaineer players in his freshman class to play, was not redshirted. That's McKinney in motion. Hunter on the option. <laughs> Willie Lewis thrown out of bounds. Down to the 48-yard line, Chris Herring over to make the stop along with Bo Orlando, number 22 Orlando. for the West Virginia Mountaineers. A year ago, Orlando had an 84-yard interception return for a touchdown at Mountaineer Field to set a Mountaineer Field record. Third down and four. Hunter on the quarterback draw. The ball goes over to West Virginia. It popped loose there. Travis Hunter fumbles the football. To Ron Ellis made the hit. Jimmy Gray comes off. And we'll have to take a look to see who came up with the football. But Jimmy Gray, with fist in hand, comes off the field. There's no doubt that this is a quarterback draw. The West Virginia University's defense objective is to get three balls, no matter if they're fumble or interceptions per game. The Ron Ellis credited with the fumble recovery for West Virginia. 4.41 to go. 
Mountaineers from the 46-yard line. Motion. Mike Applewhite leaving early. Procedure penalty against the Mountaineers. And this is a problem that has cropped up in the last two games, John. West Virginia played good ball penalty-wise through the first four games of the season, but it started against Virginia Tech. That's a look at Theron Ellis, number 66 for the Mountaineers, who made the fumble recovery. On first down and 15, Major Harris has the ball knocked away there by Mike Applewhite. Number 88, Michael Applewhite. Second in the team among tackles along defensive line play for East Carolina. He's a junior out of Henderson, North Carolina. Plays well in big games. He was the team's defensive player of the game against South Carolina. Last year, he had a total of 29 tackles. Jamie Lamont comes in motion. The draw play and a big hole for Hunter Johnson. A flag is down on the play. Johnson crosses down to the 42 and we've got a late hit flag as well. I think we could have some offsetting penalties here. Flag flew as the ball was snapped. And Johnson was hit out of bounds. So you've got to think you've got penalties against the Mountaineers and the Pirates. Again, Andre making a great move. He brought that ball all the way back to the left side on the sprint draw. And again, we, we mentioned about his vision, is it his ability to see the scene. Now you saw the late hit. There was no doubt about that penalty. So they've moved the ball back for the five-yard penalty, and now they'll mark it 15 yards for the late hit. And a big ball foul called against East Carolina for a personal foul. So the illegal motion penalty is a five-yarder. The late hit is a 15-yarder, so the Mountaineers gain 10 yards on the play. You think those officials would just subtract that out instead of marching up and down the field, huh, Tone? Mountaineers have a first down and 10. Inside ECU territory with 4.28 to go in the first half. And under Johnson, ahead to the 45. Met there by Anthony Thompson. Carry number 13 of the afternoon for Hundred Johnson. 88 yards for the senior from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Again, Hundred Johnson gets the call. Hundred Johnson again on the Ahead to the 43, he'll pick up two yards on the play. And the linebacker, Anthony Thompson, and Robert Jones there to make the hit on Undra. Robert Jones, a true freshman, he's at a Fort Union Military Academy in Virginia. Has plenty of talent and speed. Attendance this afternoon here at Ficklin Stadium, 33,786. That's the fourth largest crowd in Ficklin Stadium history. Thank you. So a good crowd on hand to watch this one. Third down and five. Andre Johnson will be stopped short of the first down. Andre Johnson again carries the football for West Virginia. That'll bring up fourth down, and Johnson will take a breather. Mike Applewhite made the stop there on Andre. Brought it ahead to the 41-yard line. Is there a Bynum is back deep to return. Carrion puts up a sky ball. Robinson from the 14-yard line ahead to the 22. 
Lawrence Drumgool over on the stop. You mentioned a sky ball there, Tony. The punt team's objective for Lance is to keep that ball in the air for 4.5 seconds, so the punt team will be able to go down and cover it. 27-yard punt by Carrion. He was trying to hang that one up there, but I'm sure he would like a little bit more distance than that, or at least Don Nealon would like a little bit more distance than that. Hunter stays in at quarterback. First time this afternoon, they come out of the I formation. Robert Pickett making the stop on Reggie McKinney. Five yard pick up, it'll bring up second down and five. There seems to be a wealth of talent in the North Carolina area with the number of uh, universities that they do have down here. Problem is there's a lot of talent, but there's too many schools. <laughs> the likes of North Carolina, North Carolina State, Wake Forest, Duke. Hunter on the option play. He is hit and knocked down behind the line of scrimmage by Mike Fox. Beautiful play there by the junior out of Akron, Ohio. Number 61, Michael Fox. An arm is all you need, and an arm is all Fox got on Travis Hunter on that play. When they're as big as this guy's arms are, there's no doubt about that. They lose a yard. That'll bring up third down and seven. Kenny in motion. Hunter looks to throw, pressure on. Al Whiting had the ball deflect off of his hand and it's caught there by Walter Wilson. A circus play gives East Carolina a first down at midfield. Number 37, Al Whiting had the ball go off of his hand and it's tipped conveniently right into split end Walter Wilson. It was good pass rush by the West Virginia defensive line. Again, hitting a quick post. The ball deflected and just a freak play. It may not have been diagram, but the Pirates will take it. Hunter again looks to throw. Oh, Jack Davenport down to the 47 yard line. Make it the 43. Davenport's first catch of the afternoon, seventh catch of the season. No huddle by East Carolina. Hunter again, looking to go deep over the middle. As his man, Bojack Davenport, could not hold on. Preston Waters was beat on the play, and the ball just a little bit overthrown. Bojack Davenport's outstretched arm. There isn't an advantage to the offense when you run a no pedal off. When you run a no huddle offense, the defense has to stay in their base defense. 26 seconds remain in the first half. Third down and three facing East Carolina. Davenport lines up as a wide out to the far right side. Jared Moody in motion up top. Third down and three. Hunter again looking deep, wide open. It is Moody. And they'll rule him down. They say the knee was touching. The Pirates will have the first down at the 34-yard line. 20 seconds remaining. First half of play, and the timeout has been taken by East Carolina. So the Pirates are racing against the clock, trying to add on to their three-point total here in the first half of play. What Coach Shaw will do here is he'll tell Chris Herring, the defensive captain, okay, if they come out in a no huddle offense, we're gonna call this play the first time, this play the second time. Fans Pepsi-Cola has a special offer for you. You can order your, yourself tickets to the Syracuse West Virginia game at a special $10 price. You'll see the special gold and blue Mountaineer fan display at participating stores for details. So for just $10, you can get yourself a ticket to watch West Virginia take on their annual rival, the Syracuse Orangemen. Mountaineers lead 17 to three, 20 seconds to go in our first half of play. 
to whoever holds here or to whoever succeeds here as the final seconds tick off. They will have the momentum as we head to the locker room at halftime. McKinney coming over in motion. Mountaineer showing blitz. Hunter pumps, looking into the end zone. The ball is caught for a touchdown, Walter Wilson. Preston Waters went after the interception, and Walter Wilson comes up with the touchdown with 14 seconds to go here in the first half of play. Give credit to Travis Hunter. He puts the ball up over the top. Now it's just a one-on-one -on -one situation. Preston going to the ball. He made a loss to that ball in the air a little bit with the wind. Imperato going for the extra point. It is good, and it's a seven-point game with 14 seconds to go here in the first half of play. You know, we talked about that momentum factor, Tony. Ever since this young guy, Travis Hunter, has been in there, the momentum has swung in favor of the East Carolina. Yes, it has on his first possession in there. He brought the team down for a field goal and a touchdown pass there from 33 yards away. And it's a seven-point game. Let's take another look at the touchdown catch. Was there contact down there? Yeah, there was some contact down there. The left hand came sticking out there, John. Enough for an offensive interference? Uh, the, the official may have thought that that was incidental from his perspective where the push really didn't uh, have any effect on the play. A moot point now as the TD counts, 17 to 10. Mountaineer is expecting a squib kick here. They leave one man back, and that is Eugene Napoleon. The other 10 players are situated inside the 40-yard line. Napoleon from one yard in. Final seconds of the first half. Eugene up ahead to the 25-yard line. Clock will stop with seven seconds to go. Art Baker's gonna go in at halftime and tell his team, hey, you guys can play with these Mountaineers. And then they're gonna start believing it. In a game like this, the longer you let this type team hang in there with you, the more difficult it is for you to win. Don Nealon speaking with the official along the West Virginia sideline. I mean, Jesus Christ. And I can guarantee you the coach is not praising the job the officials been doing this afternoon. Not that they've been doing a bad job, but coaches never say nice things during the course of action. Mountaineers will let the clock wind down here as the first half of play will come to an end. West Virginia leads it 17 to 10 over the Pirates of East Carolina University. Well, we welcome you back to Ficklin Stadium, all set to get underway with our second half of play. Tony Caridi along with John Garcia, Kevin Keyes handling the statistics up top here, along with Steve Van Horn with the spotting chores this afternoon. Head coach Don Nealon, yes, he's happy with a 17 to 10 lead, but there's no question the coach feels those 10 points on the East Carolina side should not be up there. The Pirates coming back scoring 10 unanswered points to make it a ball game as we get ready for the second half. You take a look at the statistics. West Virginia with 10 first downs, passing department, East Carolina with 94 yards through the air, West Virginia with 78. The Mountaineers with 104 yards rushing. Total yardage almost the same, 182 for the Mountaineers, 159 for the Pirates of East Carolina. Rob Imperato will kick the ball off to begin the second half of play here at Ficklin Stadium. Well, he was ready, but the wind was too. And there's a good indication that the wind is a factor on the field down below. I think the wind was definitely a factor in that long pass to the end zone, Tony. Looks like Preston just looked up and the ball took off on him. The Pirates scored their touchdown late in the first half. 
Al Whiting deflected a pass to Walter Wilson, which gave ECU a big first down. They eventually came down to score under Johnson from the eight yard line. I should say Eugene Napoleon, and Eugene brings it up ahead to the 20 yard line. A.B. Brown has been held out of the ball game as Eugene Napoleon trots off the field. A.B. bothered by a leg injury on the right side of the hamstring there. And under Johnson was forced into the game and did a good job. Mountaineers have been successful on first down plays. Nearly seven yards. Well, East Carolina has been held under two. Penalty is down on the play, and they're going to call it offsides against East Carolina. John, you had mentioned earlier the unique formation that East Carolina uses on their kickoffs, and we'll take a look at it here as they set up again, but that interesting and unique formation cost them going offsides there. <laughs> take a look at it. Rather than spreading out, East Carolina basically uses two rows. Kind of almost looks like an onside kick formation rather than a kickoff coverage formation. Use up three quarters of the field. So Imperato is ready again. He must have brought this down from the Canadian League. This one's a high one. That will be taken at the 12-yard line by Eugene Napoleon. Eugene breaking free, spinning ahead to the 33. So a 13-yard return for Eugene Napoleon, the junior out of Jersey City, New Jersey. And the Mountaineers will start off first and 10. Stephen Brady makes the tackle for the Pirates. It is first down. Spotted on the 32-yard line. This will be a very important series for both teams. East Carolina is able to maintain the momentum that they went into halftime with, and West Virginia coming out and trying to get something going here. Major Harris was held to minus one yard rushing in the first half of play. Very uncharacteristic of the Major. Andre Johnson, though, has rushed very well. And here's a good example as Johnson brings it ahead to the 44-yard line. Junior Robinson, the safety, makes the stop on Andre Johnson. A year ago, he had 99 yards against these same East Carolina Pirates. And on that carry, Andre Johnson goes over the 100-yard mark, 104 yards for Andre Johnson. So for the third straight week, a Mountaineer tailback has rushed for over 100 yards. First down on the play. The option freeze look. And again, it's the big tight end, Adrian Moss for the Mountaineers. Rolls down to the 38-yard line. That's the fourth reception of the ball game for Adrian Moore. Moss, fourth reception of the season for the big guy out of Cocoa Beach, Florida. Almost took the whole East Carolina secondary to bring the big guy down that time. A star is being born before our eyes. It's a play-action pass, plenty of time for Major Harris. A good throw, a hitch pattern over the middle, and Adrian gets upfield. Two straight first downs for the Mountaineers. One minute gone by here in the second half. The fullback draw to Craig Taylor brings him to the 35-yard line, a two-yard pickup. It'll bring up second down and eight. Craig Taylor on the carry for West Virginia. Tackled by the Pirates, James. Taylor has not lost a yard on a carry in two seasons. He's undergone a change of attitude since coming into the West Virginia program and talking to him during the off season. He said, I not only have matured as a football player, but as a person as well. No longer do I point the fingers when something goes wrong. I take a look at myself first. Second down and eight, a broken play, and Major Harris will be brought down by himself at the 44-yard line. A nine-yard loss for the Mountaineers. Charles Freeman came over just to make the Tap, but Harris put himself down. There's no doubt that there was some miscommunication on that play, whether it was Major, the tailback, or the fullback, uh, we don't really know. Bring up third down and 16. Harris has time. Adrian Moss is there. First down, West Virginia. 
as Adrian Moss makes his fifth catch of the ball game. Down to the 21-yard line. A 22-yard pickup for West Virginia's Adrian Moss. Not to belabor the point, for those of you that don't follow West Virginia football, but Moss came into the game and didn't have a single catch this season. And he has five here, including one for a touchdown. From the ECU 20, it's under Johnson. A five-yard pickup by Undra. I'll bring up second down and five from the ECU 15-yard line. James Singletary coming over to make the stop. And that's one thing that makes West Virginia such a good football team, Tony, is their depth. I mean, here's a guy that didn't have a catch coming into a game, and he's a superstar today. Calvin Phillips comes in motion. Johnson again, making the cut. Under down to the 11-yard line, down to the 12. Coming into this game, Adrian Moss had four catches in two seasons. So he's surpassed his career total already. Third down and one for West Virginia. Big play here. Taylor in motion. The quick toss to Andre Johnson. He'll be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Charlie Bauman will be called on for a field goal attempt as uh, Andre Johnson on third down and one gets knocked down behind the line of scrimmage. The toss sweep and Andre sees the seam to the inside and try to bring it back inside. A great play by number 92. A 30-yard attempt for Charlie Bauman. He's hit one for 49 here in the ball game. This one is no good. The wind took it and swept it over to the left. So Bauman's 30-yard attempt no good. West Virginia leads it by seven. East Carolina Pirates will start off from the 20-yard line. First down in 10. 10 minutes and 43 seconds to go here in the third quarter of play. Charlie Bauman missing on the field goal attempt from 30 yards away. That was Bauman's second miss of the season. First legitimate miss. His first miss came against Maryland. Kick was blocked. Moody in motion. Ball carrier is the fullback, Tim James. Ahead for a couple. That'll bring up second down and long. Here's a look at Charlie Bauman, the senior out of Erie, Pennsylvania. Bauman is now 10 of 12 field goal kicks this year. He had a career long there in the first half, 49 yarder, but missed there for 30. And you've got to think the wind took that one and flung it to the left. Again, they go to the big fullback, James, and he breaks free over the 25-yard line, down to the 26, a four-yard pickup for Tim James, a senior out of Hartsville, South Carolina, brought down by Bo Orlando. James picked up 18 yards on five carries in the first half. The majority of the time, the East Carolina offense runs its plays without a tight end, and they'll use toward receivers. This last couple series, we've seen them use the tight end. Pirates need the 30-yard line for a first down. Again, they go to James, and the big fullback has the first down. Brought down by Daryl Whitmore at the 41-yard line. 15-yard pickup for Tim James. It's an inside trap, and the big guy gets rolling. The 230 pounds, when he starts running north and south, he's going to be hard to bring down. Averages five yards per carry, picked up 15 there. First and 10, East Carolina. Marching towards West Virginia territory. And Theron Ellis is there to bring him down, back at the line of scrimmage. 
Ron had a fumble recovery in the first half. One yard pickup will bring down, bring up second down and nine. To Ron's helmet loaded with all those muskets for big plays during the year. Ron moved from the outside to inside linebacker position during fall camp, and he has adjusted very well. Moody in motion on second down and nine. Hunter. Going deep downfield, and that ball is incomplete. Daryl Whitmore on the coverage. Bojack Davenport was the intended receiver. And the freshman free safety out of Front Royal, Virginia, was there to make the play. A flag down on the play, Tony, possibly against East Carolina. I think you're going to get a holding call here, and you oftentimes will when you've got a quarterback there that's been moving back and forth and then takes the time up. It will go against East Carolina. Daryl Whitmore has interceptions in two straight games, had one here in the first half of play. Eight minutes and 13 seconds to go, third quarter. Out near coaching staff telling the team out on the field to decline the penalty. Come on, boys! And here comes the call. And a final shift on the offense. It's declined. It'll be third down. Mountaineers will bring up a third down on the East Carolina Pirates. Third down and nine from the 38-yard line. Reggie McKinney has the first down. Brought up there by Daryl Whitmore. Pirates move it into West Virginia territory down to the 47. Reggie McKinney makes the catch. Give credit to Travis Hunter with his ability to get that ball out there. Good play selection by the East Carolina coaches. Reggie McKinney's first catch of the afternoon. And the Pirates are on the march. And again, Travis Hunter sparking this East Carolina offense. The option pitch. It's Reggie McKinney. Ahead to the 40-yard line. Six and a half yard pickup for McKinney. Ronaldo Turbo credited with the stop. Ronaldo doing a good job on the cat and mouse technique on the quarterback where he'll he'll sit and won't commit himself to either one so he can help out on either the quarterback or the pitch. That'll bring up second down and four. Pirates out of the eye formation. Reggie McKinney again, the ball carrier. Chris Parker had a hold of him at the 40-yard line, but McKinney breaks free and brings it down to the 36. Reggie McKinney again carries the football. For McKinney stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, 195 pounds, so he's a strong physical guy. A hard worker, as we saw earlier in the game on one of his kickoff returns, apparently stopped at the 20-yard line, pushed and pulled and made himself seven more yards on the return. By a net eyelash there. They make it. Another first down for East Carolina. Six minutes and 47 seconds to go. Third quarter of action, West Virginia. Leads by seven. The Pirates trying to tie this one up. Travis Hunter and uh, Libretto's type of similar quarterbacks in their fashion running this type offense. Double slot formation on first down and ten. Long count by Hunter. Out here showing blitz. Hunter on the option keep. Brought down hard by Elvoid Mays at the 31-yard line. Senior cornerback Elvoid Mays of Bradenton, Florida, 
came up to make the stop on Travis Hunter. Again, they come with that motion. It just turns into an option play. Travis Hunter one-on-one -on -one with Alvin Mo Alvoid Mays. Alvoid Mays with a big lick against Pitt. Hit the big tackle, Smith Noski. Second down and four from the Mountaineer, 30-yard line. The fullback is James, ahead for a yard. Brought down by Four Mike Fox. James carries the football for ECU. Stopped by the Mountaineers, Mike Fox. James came into the ball game. It is third down. About 100%, bothered by a bruised foot. Suffered earlier in the season against Southern Mississippi. A week ago, he had just eight carries against Southwest Louisiana. Mountaineer fans now. Over 2,000 of them here at Ficklin Stadium come to their feet cheering on the West Virginia defense on a third down and four. That's McKinney in motion. Hunter in trouble. Plenty of time. Man is open. Ball is incomplete. Intended for Bojack Davenport, but overthrown. L. Boyd Mays on the coverage, and West Virginia holds on third down. Robert Pickett, along with L. Boyd Mays, back on the play. The West Virginia defense doing a great job keeping Travis in contain and not letting him scramble to the outside. Rob Imperato is on to try the field goal. A 45-yard attempt. Four minutes and 57 seconds to go here in the third quarter of action. Imperato's kick. It is high enough. It is no good wide to the right. So the Pirates threaten, but cannot come away with points. West Virginia leads at 17 to 10 with 4.51 to go here in the third quarter of action. Major Harris will try to get the offense going for the West Virginia Mountaineers here in the third quarter of play. Craig Taylor breaks it free down to the 35-yard line, a six-yard pickup on first down for Craig Taylor, the senior from Linden, New Jersey. Ryan McFatter made the stop for the East Carolina Pirates. There is Bill Kerlavage, the Mountaineer offensive, I should say outside linebacker coach. Talking things over with his unit. 100 Johnson on second down and four has the first down. Andre Johnson carries the football for the Mountaineers. Brings it ahead to the 39-yard line. By Mike Applewhite. Mike Applewhite. Of the Pirates. Left defensive tackle made the stop on Andre Johnson. At the West Virginia 40-yard line where it is first down. Eric Lester on the West Virginia bench, reserve inside linebacker, being attended to. First and 10 from the 41. Major looking to throw. Reggie Rembert has his first catch of the afternoon. That'll bring it up to the 48-yard line, a seven-yard pickup. As Reggie Rembert, West Virginia's pass receiving leader, makes his first grab of the afternoon. Major doing a good job that time throwing that ball, and that's a difficult throw for a quarterback from one hash all the way across the field onto an L pattern. Double receivers off to the left. Craig Taylor has the first down for the Mountaineers inside ECU territory. West Virginia is play, basically playing power football right now, John Garcia, lining up, and Taylor and Andre Johnson taking cracks at the interior portion of the East Carolina defense. Now these last couple plays, it looks like Coach Nealon said, hey, let's quit playing around here, guys, and let's get after it a little bit. First and 10. And Major Harris will use a timeout. Penalty flag has been thrown on the play. West Virginia. Three minutes and 30 seconds to go. We'll clean things up when we return. West Virginia 17, the Pirates of East Carolina 10. Don Nealon and Major Harris 
talking things over on the sideline. A penalty marker was thrown as Harris called timeout. Based upon the reaction of the Mountaineers, it's against West Virginia for a delay of game as the officials huddle together. 3.30 to go, West Virginia leading 17 to 10. That 25 second clock over there, Tony, is very hard to see with the crowd standing around it. Uh, a bit of a dead ball foul. Full start. On your Bold start against West Virginia. Illegal procedure. And Don Nealon cannot believe it along the sideline. So Harris took a timeout to try to straighten things up, but apparently not in time. That'll bring the ball back five yards to midfield. First down and 15 facing West Virginia. Ball carrier is under Johnson and Johnson breaks free. Just knocked down there as he crosses the 38-yard line. He was looking to spring it free to the outside. Junior Robinson came to trip up under Johnson, but take a look here. Again, under his favorite play, the sprint draw, and he utilizes his quickness and his speed. With him in there, it certainly gives you a different look than A.B. Brown. A.B. will go out and get you that 10 and 15 yards. Under can break it anywhere. A shoestring tackle takes down under Johnson. Under three minutes to go, third quarter. Second down and four, and it's Craig Taylor. Taylor has the first down for the Mountaineers. Crossing over the 35-yard line, down to the 33. Brian McFadder came over to make the stop. Taylor now with 33 yards on the ground and seven carries. into the game, Craig was averaging about 5.5 yards per carry. Jamie Lamont and Reggie Rembert are the receivers for the Mountaineers on first down and 10. The option, and here comes the major. Strung out and brought down at the 27-yard line, Junior Robinson. Knocks Harris back. Major has not been effective running so far in the ball game. Seven yard pickup, it'll bring up second down and three for Major Harris and the West Virginia University offense. The Mountaineers averaging 43 points per game, have 17 so far, under two minutes to go, third quarter. Andre Johnson, big hole! Here comes Andre Johnson and he'll score! 26-yard touchdown run for Andre Johnson, his second of the ball game. One minute and 46 seconds to go. Celebration time for West Virginia's offensive line and Andre Johnson. The Mountaineers reserve tailback is having himself some afternoon. Again, Andre's favorite play, the sprint draw. We just mentioned that this guy can break it from anywhere. Andre sees the seam, gets into the end zone. Johnson is approaching 200 yards. He's got 179 yards this afternoon. Charlie Bauman's extra point is no good. So Bauman misses a field goal, and for the second straight week, he misses an extra point. And West Virginia leads it 23 to 10 with 146 to go here in the third quarter of play. Under really has to be commended for his efforts. I mean, here's a guy who goes through spring ball, summer workouts, winter conditioning, is not a starter. And it's, it's hard to go through all that time. Here he gets his opportunity and he takes advantage of it. Let me correct myself on under Johnson's yardage so far in the ball game. 153 yards for under Johnson on 23 carries. 153 on 23 carries for under rather than 173. Don Nealon's club has a little breathing room now, 23 to 10, up by 13 points with 146 to go, third quarter play. 
Pioneer fans, have you ever had a secret fantasy involving West Virginia University football? Well, East Centurion Bank and West Virginia University are offering fans a chance to live out that Mountaineer sports fantasy. Look for details at any Key Centurion member bank location. I've had a few fantasies, but I don't know about the... Football fantasies? Yeah. You, you played, though. <laughs> this is for the type of person that has never played the game that would <laughs> like to either catch a pass from a Major Harris or try to run against the West Virginia defense or maybe be a ball boy for a game. Well, that'd be great. And if you act real nice, we might let you be a ball boy for a game. <laughs> well, Brad Carroll will come on to kick the ball off for West Virginia. The Mountaineers have been using Carroll and... Charlie Bauman. Carroll is the heir apparent to Charlie Bauman when it comes to field goal kicking. He'll be back next year. Bauman the senior. Carroll's kick taken at the 15-yard line, met there by Basil Proctor and Steve Grant. That was Willie Lewis on the return. And the ECU Pirates will take over. First down and 10 from the 24 and a half yard line. When's the last time that uh, West Virginia won two back-to-back -back games on natural grass, Tony? It's been a while ago, hasn't it? 71 yards on the last drive, eight plays, three minutes and five seconds as Andre Johnson scores from 26 yards away. When was it? 1981, Virginia and Maryland. The hands of uh, former quarterback Oliver Luck. Pirates marched on West Virginia in their last possession, but were unable to come away with any points. Hunter almost goes down over the middle. Pass intended there for Al Whitey, Darrell Whitmore on the coverage. Pirate fans looking for an interference call, but there is no penalty. Take a look at this. Hunter almost goes down. Good balance. Good presence of mind to come up firing. I think the officials felt that they owed us one on that one. Second and ten from the 24. Tim James is the fullback. Hunter on the option keep. And he's brought down there by Theron Ellis at the 25. Yard, yard and a half pickup as Theron Ellis was there to make the stop and read the play very well. That'll bring up third down and long for the East Carolina Pirates. That was very well played by Theron. Uh, you remember the, the series in the first in the initial part of the game where he overran the quarterback. That time he stayed right on the inside and made the play. Danelle Harper in motion. Third down play. Pressure is on. Ball is loose. Chris Parker made the hit. They'll call it an incomplete forward pass, but that'll bring up fourth down as Chris Parker, the senior from Whitehall, Pennsylvania, met up with Travis Hunter face to face. Big Chris Parker with the pass rush. I mean, he put a shot on him. He was up in his soup cooler, Tony. Chris Parker with his third sack of the season. Jet is on the punt. Mountaineers go after the block. And the ball will be ruled dead as the ball was squibbed on the kick back at the 46-yard line in East Carolina territory. So West Virginia will have excellent possession and position. A 20-yard punt by Jeff with 43 seconds to go here in the third quarter of play. And the Mountaineer fans who have made the trip down from the Mountain State are standing and applauding. A tremendously loyal support group. Flags fly. start offense still first down well the mountaineers continue to hurt themselves fans don't forget that mountaineer sports nights comes your way next friday evening on msn television join host woody o'hare along with head coach don nealon to review game films of today's game and review the first six games of the season for the west virginia mountaineers check your local listings 
Major Harris on the option keep. Here comes the Major. First down for the Mountaineers as Harris is knocked out of bounds at the 34-yard line. So the Major on a 17-yard option keep, starting to get himself into the flow of the game. Brought out there by Chris Hall, the left cornerback, when Major struggled a bit rushing-wise in the first half and has cut loose with a pair of nice runs here in the second half. A seven-yarder and a 17-yarder. That'll bring the ball into the East Carolina 34-yard line. Harris again will keep. Tries to cut it back, and the Major reaches the 25-yard line. We're really seeing, starting to see that game plan open up. Now, that last series, we utilized the inside run. Now we're going with the option, and that's going to really open things up for West Virginia going into the fourth quarter here. An eight-yard pickup, second down and two. Lamont and Bell are the receivers. Three seconds to go here in the third quarter of play. Johnson, the ball carrier. Hundra again finding the going very well up the middle. As the third quarter comes to an end, West Virginia marching on the East Carolina Pirates. Mountaineers 23 and the Pirates 10. Mountaineers begin the fourth quarter of play marching on the East Carolina Pirates. West Virginia will have a first down and 10 from the ECU 14-yard line. Mountaineers lead it by 13 points, 23 to 10. As we get ready to begin the fourth quarter of play, the Mountaineers with 355 yards of total offense. Pirates with 207. West Virginia comes into the game averaging 487 yards of total offense per game. That's good for the eighth best in the nation. First and 10 from the 14-yard line. Tight end, Moss in motion. Major Harris on the option keep. Major spinning down to the two-yard line. Beautiful run there by the Major. Shannon Bowling, the left defensive end, came over to make the hit. And the fans that had not seen him before are now getting a good indication of West Virginia quarterback Major Harris and his abilities. We just talked about how the inside run opens up that option for Major Harris. Now it's hard for East Carolina to figure out what we're going to do, whether it's the inside run or the option. Aaron Evans lines up as a wing back. Now in motion comes Evans. The ball carrier is Craig Taylor. And he is stopped short. That'll bring up second down and goal. Out here, defensive coordinator Bob Shaw with board in hand. Orlando as student assistant. They'll make adjustments during the game, Tony, where they may change a coverage, uh, a little wrinkle here and there. And that's what he's discussing with Bo right now. Andre Johnson takes the lead. He'll be short of the goal line, down to the one-yard line. That'll bring up third down and goal for the Mountaineers. I guess we can't call them chalk talks no more since an easel board. What do you think? Marker talk. <laughs> West Virginia with a double tight end formation. Daryl Mitchell and Adrian Moss. Andre Johnson is the tailback. Craig Taylor the fullback on third and goal. Harris has the touchdown for West Virginia. That's touchdown number four of the season for Major Harris as he scores it from one yard away. Take another look. Give credit to Major Harris. Kind of slow for the first three quarters or first two and a half quarters. Things have really opened up for him here in this fourth quarter. Bauman's extra point attempt is good. And the Mountaineers take a commanding 30 to 10 lead with 13 minutes and 25 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter of play. The Mountaineers use up one minute and 35 seconds of the fourth quarter clock to take a 30 to 10, 10 lead. Seven plays, 44 yards, two minutes and 18 seconds. Major Harris scores his first touchdown of the ball game. 
Harris has thrown for one TD and now rush for another. This is a West Virginia fan. Looks like Grizzly Adams here. That guy could be a good candidate for the Mountaineer mascot someday. <laughs> Brad Carroll will be kicking off for West Virginia. Junior Robinson and Reggie McKinney are back deep. Harold Boot comes to McKinney at the five yard line. McKinney ahead to the 24. And Travis Hunter and crew will start it off from there. J. Wheeler, number 46, coming off. Well, Jay was out there on McKinney. He had a super job. I mean, he come down there and really put it on that wedge. Got in on tackle. Got another quarterback switch. Travis Hunter is out. And it's Charlie Libretto back into the ball game. Pass is complete to Walter Wilson. Ahead to the 35-yard line. Wilson caught a touchdown pass to end the first half of the play. Makes a nice grab there. Bo Orlando on the stop. Travis Hunter started to come out for East Carolina. And Charlie Libretto instead comes in. Libretto began the game and was 2 of 10 passing and was yanked by Coach Art Baker. Travis Hunter came on. Escorted the offense down for 10 points and... Proved to be ineffective here in the second half of play. First and 10 from the 35-yard line. The lay draw goes to the fullback, James. James brought down at the 42. Bo Orlando and Scott Summons making the stop. Nice play call there on the delay draw to that fullback. Seven-yard pickup. It'll bring up second down and three. It's the Sun hides into the clouds here at Ficklin Stadium. And quickly reappears. Almost on cue. Again, it's James. He stood up and brought down. Good job by the interior defensive front of West Virginia. As you can see, a beautiful day here. Hardly a cloud in the sky. Chris Herring, credited on the last stop, as Charlie Libretto awaits the play call. East Carolina has been changing their quarterbacks about the uh, same as you change your socks there, Tony. Even more often. <laughs> Third down and one. Big play here. From the I formation. A little bit of a delay there, taking the ball in, but they've got the first down. Willie Lewis, the ball carrier, stop credited to Theron Ellis. Hey, Willie Hale Lewis, Hale a Lewis. junior out of Eldosta, Georgia. Stop by linebacker Theron Ellis of West Virginia. Lewis comes into the game, 21 oh, no. carries, 98 yards this season. Theron Ellis, you nicknamed him Robocop last night? He looks like a Robocop, doesn't he out yeah. there? He's got everything on. He doesn't miss a piece of equipment. Pads here, pads there. <laughs> Horse collar, first and 10 from the 48. Libretto with time. Here comes Summits on the march. Jackson after Libretto as well. It's by Harry, nice play. Finally, Bo Orlando brings him down. Good job there by Libretto. Junior out of Winter Haven, Florida. West Virginia. A lot of run, and he picks up six yards. Defensive line able to just tee it off and get after Charlie. It's awful difficult for an offensive lineman to uh, pass block. Second down and four. Ten minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the ball game. West Virginia leads it by 20. Libretto has a beautiful strike thrown there to Bojack Davenport. First down, East Carolina. L. Boyd Mays on the coverage for West Virginia. So Libretto, who had struggled throwing the ball early in the game, comes out here in the late going and starts to throw some strikes. The ball is now spotted at the Mountaineer 32-yard line. Inside to West Virginia territory at the 32. Bojack, I mean, that even sounds like he should play football, doesn't it? That's a good name, yeah. 
Bo Jack, Junior Robinson. We've got some names on this team. That's Lewis in motion. Inside handoff. Head for a couple on the play. That was Danelle Harper, Robert Pickett, credited with the stop. There are some West Virginia ties on this uh, East Carolina coaching staff, Tony, with uh, defense coordinator Richard Bell. Spent a couple of years at West Virginia under Jim Carlin as the team's defensive coordinator. Second down and four, Libretto firing along the sideline, incomplete. Tended it there for Walter Wilson. Pass was short. Chris Herring, linebacker, came over to put the cover on Wilson. That'll bring up a third down and four for Charlie Libretto and the ECU Pirates. Virginia, the ball knocked down there by Tim James, the fullback. And the Pirates will be called on for a fourth down play. Ronaldo Turnbull with great pressure that time. ECU will go for it with nine minutes and 10 seconds to go in the game and trailing by 20 points. Head coach Art Baker says on fourth and four, go for it. They need the 22-yard line. The pullback is James. Pressure by West Virginia from the backside. The pass is caught there for the first down. Danelle Harper made the catch, and Bo Orlando makes the stop, but ECU has a first down at the West Virginia 11-yard line. Plenty of time by Libretto, and he just popped the ball there to Harper coming across the middle. Libretto has a hard time when he drops straight back in that pocket, seeing over those big guys. Kind of just threw it and ducked out of there. Libretto looking into the end zone. Scott Summits brings down Charlie Libretto at the 12 yard line. Scott, Scott, maybe a one-yard loss on the play. He showed great speed there. Scott just ran him down, and, and this Charlie guy can really run. Tremendous speed by Summits, considering the fact that he's 6'3", 278 pounds. He was able to come from behind and knock Libretto down. Brings it back to the line of scrimmage, so it's second down and 10 from the 11. Pirates badly need a score here. Down by 20. the fullback ahead for a yard. West Virginia defense growing tough. Ronaldo Turnbull and Chris Parker over to make the stop on Tim James. We'll give him a yard and so it will be third down and nine. The Pirates are seven of 15 in third down conversions this afternoon. Back is Tim James. Libretto again with time. And that's a touchdown for the ECU Pirates. Al Whiting has the touchdown grab from 11 yards away, but there's a penalty marker down on the play. A marker down on the play, and it will go against East Carolina. Nice throw and catch by East Carolina on a drag pattern across the middle. So the touchdown is negated. Offensive pass interference, 15 yards, loss of down. Boy, you talk about getting slapped in the head. You have a touchdown taken away, you lose the down. So that'll bring up a fourth down. 
for East Carolina. It was called offensive interference, but if you took a look at it, it would be more like setting a pick. And that's where the marker came down. So it's fourth down and 24 yards to go. Libretto again looking into the end zone. Whiting again, but this time he cannot hold on. So Whiting made the catch for an apparent touchdown and had a perfect chance there, but cannot hold on, and West Virginia will take over on downs. Willie Edwards and Daryl Whitmore were back on the coverage, but Whiting had a good chance to catch this one. An absolutely superb throw by Libretto. Just dropped the football. In the hands and off the chest, and it doesn't get any better than that. The Pirates marched with that football for six minutes and one second and come away empty. Andre Johnson, make it Eugene Napoleon. Spinning ahead for a couple. As Don Nealon goes to his third string, tailback Eugene Napoleon. And a quarterback switch in there as well for West Virginia. Greg Jones is into the ball game in place of Major Harris. Three yard gain and it's second down and seven. Jones a tremendous passer. Napoleon again getting the call. And the junior from Jersey City, New Jersey closes in on the 34 yard line. Robert Jones making the stop. Napoleon comes into the game, 18 carries this season for 81 yards. Mountaineer strong safety, Bo Orlando. Third down and a long yard for West Virginia. The pitch to Napoleon, he's got the room and the first down. Eugene spinning ahead to the 42 yard line, 41 and a half. First down for the Mountaineers with six minutes to go in the ball game. Anthony Thompson credited with the stop on Napoleon. We can remember way back to the Bowling Green game. He carried the ball nine times for uh, 58 yards. Also had a 16 yard run in that game. Aaron Evans is the fullback and Napoleon the tailback. Jones. As Adrian Moss, ball there, but Moss cannot hang on. Adrian's had a great afternoon catching the ball. Five receptions, one touchdown pass. Moss with 85 yards and catches this afternoon. Anthony Thompson over on the coverage of Moss. Reggie Rembert with one catch so far in the ball game, lining up wide to the left. Jamie Lamont to the right. Single man in the backfield is Aaron Evans. Second down and 10. Jones has the ball intercepted. This is Chris Hall. And Hall down to the 45-yard line. 5.33 to go. East Carolina trails it by 20. Reserve quarterback Greg Jones throws his first interception as a West Virginia Mountaineer. Chris Hall was right there. I'm sure he'd like to have that one back, but that's the only way Greg's going to be able to learn how to play this system is get in there and throw a couple of those. On first and 10, Libretto is in trouble. Firing downfield, and that ball is caught by Walter Wilson. Wilson down to the 22-yard line. Boy, I tell you, Walter Wilson makes the big play when it looks as though it's going to be a loss. And you must give credit there to the quarterback, Charlie Libretto, who is in trouble and fires it. A 24-yard catch and run for Walter Wilson. First down for East Carolina at the 21-yard line. He kinda, Virginia territory. He kind of reminds you of number 22, Boston College, a few years ago, though, the way he scrambles around there. Libretto again looks to throw. This time, Pat Marlette is there to say hello. The senior out of Princeton, New Jersey, with the sack on Charlie Libretto. Coach Robertson 
considers Pat Marlette a pass rush specialist, and that time just ripping through and coming up with a big play. The last time he chased uh, Libretto around there, almost caught him before he got rid of the big play. Eight yard loss it is. Second down and 18. Libretto looking for the far sideline. Bo Orlando had the hand stuck out there. And he deflected that ball. Intended over there for Bo Jack Davenport. Bo Orlando having a great year. And if there's any youngsters out there who want to know what it takes to play major college football, ask Bo. Takes a lot of hard work. He's an overachiever and he's done a great job here at West Virginia. Third down and 18. Now Whiting lines up far to the right. Walter Wilson to the left side. Pull back is Tim James. Libretto again, looking at the West Virginia pressure. Libretto has room. To Ron Ellis there to knock him down short of that first down marker. Down to the 14 yard line. To Ron Ellis knocking Libretto out. And that'll bring up fourth down for East Carolina. A 16-yard pickup by Charlie Libretto. Again, great pressure by the West Virginia defensive line. Theron makes an exceptional effort here, making the tackle before he gets to the sticks. Timeout has been taken by the East Carolina Pirates as Greg Jones takes a rest. Pepsi-Cola has a special offer, Mountaineer fans, and you can order yourself tickets to the Syracuse-West Virginia game at a special $10 price. See the special gold and blue Mountaineer fan display at participating stores for details. The Syracuse game is the only home game remaining for West Virginia that isn't already a sellout. Boston College has been sold out, and Penn State sold out almost before the season began. The West Virginia coaching staff feels that that week off next week is going to be a big benefit to them to heal some of those little nicks and bruises. And I'm sure it'd be a benefit to A.B. Brown to have a week off. There's Brown to the right. Played in only the first series for the Mountaineers before going out with an injury to the right hamstring. And with 419 to go in West Virginia leading by 20 points. We say hello and thank you for all you Mountaineer fans watching on WTRF and Wheeling. This Bud's for you. A little bit of bad news for the West Virginia coaching staff this week. Uh, strength coach Alan Johnson has decided to leave here at the end of the season. Johnson's done a tremendous job. He sure has. We'll take over as conditioning coach for the Baltimore Orioles. Fourth down and three. Facing East Carolina. 4.19 to go. Libretto has his man for the first down. That's Al Whiting. Down to the seven yard line. So the Pirates will not quit. Robert Pickett making the stop on Whiting. Whiting came into the ball game, tied for the lead in reception with Walter Wilson. At the Mountaineer nine yard line. First and goal for ECU. Libretto has time. The ball will be ruled incomplete. Libretto in the act of passing. Chris Parker in on the coverage. Take another look. Watch 94 there for the Mountaineers. Chris Parker getting in the periphery there of Charlie Libretto. That's the second time he has had the ball come out of his hand there in the act of throwing. Second and goal from the seven yard line. Into the end zone it goes and the ball is intercepted. Chris Herring. The junior linebacker from Pueblo, Colorado, intercepts the pass in the East Carolina end zone. And the Pirates have another scoring opportunity. Go for naught. Chris doing a great job reading this play, setting that ball right on the hash. His second interception of the year. Aaron 
had an interception earlier in the season. As John mentioned, that's interception number two, and the Mountaineers will take over. First and 10 from the 20 yard line. Under four minutes to go. Greg Jones in at the quarterback for West Virginia. Handoff goes to Aaron Evans. And the Richmond, Virginia native pushes ahead for a couple. Four yard gain, it'll be second down and six. Drinking, I don't know either one. Big crowd on hand, 33,000, fourth largest in Thickland Stadium history for homecoming 1988. <laughs> Eugene Napoleon gets the call, looks for the room to the outside, and he will be mowed under. <laughs> Charles Freeman <laughs> makes the stop. Steve Braddy around also to make the hit. <laughs> Total yardage for West Virginia, 392. They come into the game averaging 487. East Carolina with 315 yards. On the ground this afternoon, they come in averaging 426 total offense. Third down and six. No, has Brannis Bell, and they'll rule it incomplete at the 35-yard line. The East Carolina offense has been very consistent throughout this year as far as their ability to run and throw the football. Just been struggling with their defense. It doesn't get any easier for them the next three weeks here. Lance carry on punt. A high driving punt. Bynum back at the 17 yard line. Looks for room. And E.J. Wheeler was over there to make the stop at the 31-yard line. 2.17 to go. West Virginia leads it 30 to 10. Of West Virginia. Well, the East Carolina Pirates trying to get on the board here. They have been held scoreless in the second half of play, trailing it by 20 points. Travis Hunter. Has seen action at quarterback. Charlie Libretto has seen action as well. And now we've got our third quarterback in there for East Carolina this afternoon. East Carolina is scheduled not getting any easier the next three weeks here. They have Florida State, Syracuse, and Miami of Florida. Jeff Blake is the quarterback for East Carolina. Freshman. And Blake again will look. Blake this time. Bobs that ball out there, and it is complete to Bynum. 39 yard line. They'll be a few yards short of that first down marker. Daryl Whitmore on the coverage for West Virginia. Daryl Whitmore makes the tackle for West Virginia. That'll bring up a third down and two with under two minutes to go in the contest. Markers come down. There was motion on the right side on the West Virginia defensive line. Pat Marlette took off. Flags on the play. The question is, was he drawn off? And the answer is? Start. Offense, still third down. Yes. That'll bring back the Pirates Eight by four yards. Against the Pirates for illegal procedure. It, it is still third, third down. Third down and seven. is in trouble and Scott Summit makes his second sack of the afternoon. The senior out of Davidsville, Pennsylvania. Played very well this afternoon and he gets Jeff Blake there behind the line of scrimmage. 
And West Virginia has held the Pirates once again. As you said, Tony, Scott Summons having a great game, not only a great game, but a great year, and he's very valuable because he can play that nose position and the tackle position. John Jett's punt taken by Granis Bell. Granis at the 45. I head to the 47 and a half yard line. 32 seconds and counting, and this one is basically over. It's all over but the shouting. Executive producer of the Mountaineer Sports Network is Mike Parsons. Today's game, directed by Nick Smith. The associate producer is Alan Hercules. Our next MSN television game will be Saturday, October the 22nd, as the Mountaineers face Boston College on many of these same stations. Special thanks to Kevin Keyes and Steve Van Horn for their work up top this afternoon. Ball carrier is Eugene Napoleon. Eugene moves into East Carolina territory, down at the 46-yard line. This guy rides out on the field and wins. I, I want to know something Pirate and an Altineer meets. That's a heck of a pirate, boy. He gets, and he gets quite an escort before the game starts. They bring him in in a big white stretch limousine. We thought it was Spuds McKenzie there for a minute. Final seconds ticking off the clock. Three, two, and one. And the ball game is over. The West Virginia University Mountaineers have improved their record to 6-0 and with a 30-10 win over the Pirates of East Carolina University.